So a while ago I received a bunch of these raw LCDs, no controller integrated here in that package whatsoever. You have to drive the segments directly via AC, which I do using a function generator right now. If you want to know some details about these displays, uh, watch the related mailbag video card link. Um, yeah, but driving them with the function generator is not the goal here, is it? Usually the goal is to drive the LCD with a microcontroller or microprocessor or whatever computational device you have. In my case here, an Arduino Nano. Um, yeah, there's a, one problem. Uh, <laughs> 40 pins and 30 pins. That's not to say that you couldn't drive an LCD with a microcontroller if it has enough pins. It's absolutely possible and EVBlog did a good video about that. I link it in below. Uh, but usually you wouldn't go that route. Instead you would use an LCD controller like this AY0438 which has <laughs> incidentally 40 pins. Okay, uh, my pin counting here is not completely correct. Uh, the LCD has some no connects and uh, not every pin here is an output to a segment of the LCD. It also needs a yeah, power supply and so on and some data input from the microcontroller. But uh, yeah, so the idea is the microcontroller has only a few lines to your LCD controller and the LCD controller does the rest. That is driving pin by pin each segment of the LCD with an AC voltage. So let's dive in. Inside that LCD driver you find a 4 byte shift register which you can load via a data in and a clock line from your microcontroller and you can transfer the content of that shift register to 4 byte latch via a load line and in turn the latches control 32 segment drivers for your LCD segments. And the back plane of your LCD is connected to something that's called an LCD AC generator. It does not really generate AC, uh, but more on that later. Frequency is controlled by an uh, external capacitor. Yeah, and most LCD controllers will have more or less the same architecture. They may differ in details, uh, yeah, bigger shift registers, more segment drivers, uh, fixed frequency or maybe the frequency controlled by an external resistor instead of a capacitor, interface logic instead of, uh, yeah, raw CMOS logic access to a shift register might be an SPI or I squared C serial bus or maybe a parallel interface, whatever. I wired up the chip on the breadboard accordingly and yeah, I had to move it a little bit to the right to get nearer to my LCD. Um, I haven't wired up anything to the Arduino yet. Uh, it just supplies 5 volt regulated to the chip. I also have three micro switches here and these are connected to the data in, the clock and the load line of the chip so we can manually put some data into it. And uh, yeah you might recognize it, uh, here is my ground, here is my plus 5 volts. The data button has a pull down resistor so it's normally low while the clock button 
has a pull up resistor. Uh, where's my pull up resistor? There is it, hiding. So the clock line is normally high and I will show you in a moment why. And then I have the low button with a pull down, so normally low. If I switch my Arduino on, nothing happens, which is a good thing. On power up, the outputs of that chip are in a defined state and that is low. Now, if I give high on the data line by pressing the button and toggle my clock 32 times, and give a pulse on the latch button, load, Oh, mm, looks like I skipped a segment. Okay, um, <laughs> I could try that again, but uh, I can uh, show you the reverse. Uh, I let the data button not pressed, so low on the data line, 32 pulses on my clock line. Load and it's clear again. And let's try that again here, 32 times. And load. Yeah, now I got it. Okay, uh, the micro switches are not debounced. So <laughs> my control signals to the chip are, yeah, not really of high quality. Anyway, uh, let's have a look at uh, some schematics and the data sheet, what I actually did here. Just as a reminder, we have that 32 segment drivers that go to the LCD as well as a backplane output. We have that capacitor which determines the frequency of our AC generator and we have that data in and clock line into our shift register and that load line which transfers the content of the shift register into our latches which control segment drivers. Now you probably have guessed it from looking at the board but uh, pin 1 to 20 that is more exactly pin 6 to 20 that is the segment outputs 29 to 15, they go to one side of my LCD to the pins 1 to 20 or more exact to pin 2 and 3 and 8 to 20. Not all pins on the LCD uh, are really used and uh, yeah there, there's one, one segment on the LCD I actually don't want to use. Um, on the other side, uh, it's a little bit more convoluted, but basically pin 21 to 40 is somehow connected to 21 to 40 on my LCD. Uh, yeah, 21 to 27 to LCD, 21 to 27, 28, 29 to 29, 30. So I skipped the number 28. That's the colon. I, I don't need the colon on the LCD. Um, yeah, 30 is the backplane output from the AC generator that goes to a backplane pin on the LCD. Uh, I use pin 40. The LCD has a second backplane connector, which is, uh, yeah, they are internally connected, so no problem. It's uh, sufficient to connect just one backplane connector. Uh, that LCD phi input is, uh, yeah, my small capacitor to ground. And yeah, uh, VSS goes to the Arduino power ground and VDD goes to the 5 volt rail of the Arduino, no problem. And then I have my three switches. So I have my data in switch, which is normally low with a pull down resistor. I have my clock 
switch, which is we are pull up normally high. Yeah, we talked about that. And I have my load line, which is also via pull down resistor normally low. And now let's have a look at the timing diagram why <clears throat> this is normally high. The timing of the chip is pretty simple. You have your data in line. So first you load the segment 64 bit and last you load the segment one bit into the shift register. And of course, for every bit you need a clock impulse. And the important thing here is the shift register shifts or loads a new bit with the falling edge of the clock. And that's the reason why I yeah, inverted the logic for the clock micro switch have it normally high. So when I press it, it will load the bit that I just set to the data inline. And of course, at the end, I have to give a positive pulse to move the contents of the shift register to the latch. And back on the breadboard, you can see the whole mess. So pin 1 to 20 goes to pin 1 to 20 of the LCD and pin 21 to 40 goes to pin 21 to 40 of the LCD. And usually that makes sense because when you put that on a PCB, you might want to place the controller below <laughs> the LCD just to save space and make routing easy because yeah, if it's routed that way and your LCD controller is sitting below the LCD, you just have yeah, uh, short traces from the pins, yeah, mostly without crossing or anything between uh, yeah, your chip and the LCD. Um, this will be an important issue later on. But for now, let's make the Arduino earn its money. And it does. So gone are the micro switches with the pull up, pull down resistors. Instead, my data line, my clock line and my load line go now to the digital in outputs, outputs two to four of my Arduino. And uh, currently it just does some bit banging and writing out four random, not, not random, four bit patterns into the controller. And that would be uh, zero completely, then once completely, 32 of them, then zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, and one zero one zero one zero and uh, yeah you can see the result uh, let's have a look at the code the whole bit banging is actually not that complicated let's begin with the declarations i have my three digital pins here for data clock and load number two three and four and i have four constants here unsigned long so 32 bits which I will need later. And byte one is simply a uh, one shifted zero bits to the right. So in the direction of the high bit and that's a one or two to the power of zero. Byte two is a one shifted eight bits to the right. So 265 or two to the power of eight. Byte 3 is 2 to the power of 16. Byte 4 is 2 to the power of 24. I really need these constants only to overcome some shortcomings in the Arduino IDE. Setup, equally simple. Uh, I just initialize my serial output for debugging reasons. And I set all of my digital pins to output. 
and just be on the safe side, I set them all to low. The loop does nothing more than repeatedly write out these four bit patterns. And here for creating these bit patterns, I need this byte 4, byte 3, byte 2, byte 1, because in the Arduino IDE you can only define 8 bit bit constants. So yeah, the first one here is obviously <laughs> 0. The second one here is 32 times a 1. The third is a 1, a 1, a 1, a 1. Yeah, we talked about that. And the fourth is a 1, uh, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, etc. And I have a variable here, which is an unsigned long array at the moment of size one. Um, more on that later. And uh, yeah, I have this routine yeah, where the bit banging takes place, AY0438 load, where I pass that array and the size of the array. That's all. Then delay 500 microseconds. Yeah, next bit pattern, load, delay, next bit pattern, load, delay, and so forth in a loop. Just the start of the AY0438 load procedure. Um, yeah, I'm passing, as I said, an array of unsigned long 32 bit values and uh, yeah, the number of chips or yeah, the number of unsigned long 32 bit values. So uh, yeah, um, you can actually drive with three pins several of these chips. I will show you after this. Um, so I have a uh, constant unsigned long. Yeah, we're working with 32 bit words. Uh, that is the segment bit I'm interested in and it's always the most significant bit. So a 1 shifted 31 times to the right. Um, yeah, I have here some loop variables, uh, which chip I'm addressing, which segment bit I'm addressing and a buffer variable where I store the 32 bits of for one chip in. And yeah, this just for debugging reasons, I mm, yeah give out some timing information on my serial port. So the whole bit banging is done in two loops. The outer loop goes through the chips I provided or the unsigned longs in the array. Currently I have only chips as one, so I only go once through that loop. And I copy the data out of that unsigned long array into my local variable, just so I don't mess up any data in the array. Yeah, it's just good practice. And then in the inner loop, I go through the bits or segments inside that unsigned long. And I start with bit 32, the most significant bit, and I end with bit 1, the least significant bit. And I do this, you remember, because the most significant bit goes first, so the higher segment numbers go first onto the data line when you shift them into the shift register. So for each bit I first write a high to the clock line because later on I will need a negative edge to actually shift the bit into the register of the controller. Then I test if the most significant bit of my segments variable is a 1. I do this by uh, doing a bitwise AND with this constant, which is <coughs> sorry, 1 and 31 zeros. 
so it has only set the most significant bit and if that bit is also set in the segments variable then the result should be equal to that constant that's the case write high to the data line otherwise write low and then create that negative edge on my clock line by setting the pin to low and at the end i simply shift the contents of my segments variable one bit to the left so the most significant bit flies out and the next bit hops into the position of the most significant bit finally yeah write high to the load line and then low again which causes the controller to load the 32 or more bits we just shifted in okay and yeah i uh, print out how long the whole thing took uh, it's currently about 450 microseconds so not too long and now it's time to actually talk about uh, why uh, i have this array here and not simply yeah, a variable passed down just one unsigned int and unsigned long and i should also mention that there is a library for the Arduino available for the AY0438 and why I don't <clears throat> want to use it. So why do I use an array with a variable size, uh, the size being called chips? Um, answer is quite simple. You can easily daisy chain several of these controllers, okay? So your microcontroller sits here, uh, data in, clock load, and the chip also has a data out port, which goes directly into the data in port of the next chip. And yeah, you can daisy chain them to drive more LCD displays or LCD displays with more than 32 segments. That's it. Um, also to note here, uh, the AC generator of the first chip, yeah, the frequency is determined by the external capacitor, but you can simply daisy chain the backplane output of the first chip into the LCD input, yeah, LCD fee, where normally the capacitor is of the next chip and so on. Yeah, and your clock and load line, you have to feed that, of course, to each of the chips. The reason why I don't want to use that library has everything to do with the wiring here on the breadboard. I talked about that before. Uh, respectively, uh, all the traces you need if you put that on a PCB, especially with the chip below the LCD. You see that library and you can Google for it. Uh, you find it simply, uh, yeah, AY0438 Arduino library. It's on GitHub. Um, requires you to connect the LCD in a very specific way to your controller. And you start with your first digit and this has been to connect it in the way A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then decimal point. Second is second uh, digit A, B, C, D, E, F, G, decimal point and so on. The library requires you to connect your display in exactly that way. If you have a look at the uh, 
data sheet. Okay, that's uh, what you get when you buy from AliExpress your stuff. Um, <laughs> the pin assignments of the LCD are, uh, yeah, a little bit all over the place. Um, I mean, you have a table here. Uh, for ease of use, I marked the most uh, important stuff out here in the graphic. So we can almost forget about the first digit because it's only a half digit and uh, yeah, it pins for the BC segments are here, decimal point is here. Second digit, EDC decimal point and GFAB, GFAB up here. Second one, GFAB up here, EDC decimal point down here. Fourth digit, GFA, EDCB. Uh, yeah, you can try to route that to these pins, but uh, you probably don't uh, want to if you can avoid it. And indeed you can avoid it. Here I'm switching on the LCD segments exactly in sequence. So one decimal point, yeah, G decimal point A, B, C, D, E, F, G decimal point A, B, C, D, E, F, G, no decimal point here, low bat plus minus over. And the code to do that is in fact very simple. That's the code in my loop now and it's not much. I mean I have two nested for statements here. One is counting through the digits of the LCD display. The other is counting through each segment within a digit. Segment 7, 0 to 7, that's where the loop goes, is actually the decimal point for, uh, for digit. <clears throat> and all I do inside that loop is assign my segment data with a unsigned long from this two-dimensional array LCD digit segments, which stores the correct bit or segment of my driver for each digit and each segment. And then I load it uh, to the LCD display, short uh, delay, and that's it. Down here, this is just, yeah, the outliers. So I have stored in that long, um, unsigned long, uh, the bit pattern for the low bud segments, uh, which is actually only one segment, so also contains only one bit set. LCD plus segments uh, actually contains two bit sets and LCD minus segments, LCD over segments, again, only one bit set in these verbs. Um, yeah, so the intelligence is obviously in this array and we'll have a look at that now. So I have a constant LCD digit, which is four, just the number of digits in my LCD display. And then I have that two dimensional array of unsigned long. Uh, yeah, one dimension gives me the four digits and the others, the eight segments, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, plus eight segment, the decimal point. And I formatted it in a way that um, I basically have a matrix. So the LCD segments uh, here and each line gives me one digit. Now, there's a little bit of bit banging uh, going on in here for each digit and segment. And just as an example, uh, let's take from the second digit, the segment A. Okay, so this is on my LCD pin 
30. So A to A is on pin 30. And I connected that to my controller here to pin 29, which is the output from the 32 bit word in the latch for segment 6. Okay, and now I'm taking, yeah, a value 1 unsigned long, which is basically 30 <coughs> in binary code, 31 zeros, at a 1 at the end, and left shift that 5 times, which is 6 minus 1, so segment 6 minus 1. And I get something like that. Uh, so a lot of zeros, <laughs> a one and one, two, three, four, five zeros. And that is actually exactly the binary content that the latch of my controller needs to light up exactly that segment here. And so I can map in a static data in a static data structure the whole yeah from pin to pin and internally in the controller uh, from ledge to pin yeah it bolts down into one array. And now all we have to do, and this is more or less bread and butter, uh, map numbers to <laughs> seven digit displays. And I've done exactly that. Uh, here I'm displaying just random numbers between minus 1999 and plus 1999 with a random decimal digit in between. And it's really just a few dozen lines of code. In the loop, I generate a random number and a random <laughs> number of uh, decimals. Yeah, I measure the time it takes to update the whole display. And it's below 650 microseconds on a nano. Uh, yeah, then I have this mystery function here, LCD number segment data, which gets a number to be displayed and uh, the decimals of that number. And yeah, you already seen that the load procedure where I load the 32 bits of data into the controller. So let's have a look at this function here next. So this function gives you the segment data to be loaded into the controller for a specific number. The number given as yeah, minus 1999 to plus 1999 as integer with a fixed number of decimals. And first I initialize my segment data with 32 zeros. If the number is greater than zero, I add the bits for the plus sign to my data. If the number is smaller than zero, yeah, the bits for the minus sign. And I convert the number to a positive number by multiplying it with minus one. Then I loop through my four, that is three and a half digits, starting with the least significant digit on the right and working my way up to the most significant digit to the left, which is digit zero. I calculate the numeral, which I want to display in the digit by number modulo 10. And then I add the segment data for that digit and for that numeral, so 0 to 9, to my segment data. And I divide my number by 10, integer division, and yeah, four times the whole thing. 
What happens in the loop is I start with my, for example, 1999 modulo 10, and this gives me a numeral of nine, which I have to display at the least significant digit on the right. And then I divide that by 10 in tetra division, leaves me with 1,199, modulo 10. Yeah, again, number 9 divided by 10, leaves me with 19, modulo 10. So number 9 again, divided by 10, leaves me with 1, modulo 10. Yeah, number 1 to be displayed on the most significant digit on the left. Finally, if I have decimals, I add the bit for the decimal point to my segment data. So you remember the in that array here between 0 and 6 are the bit patterns for the different segments of a seven segment display and in the seventh place of that array is the decimal point so fixed number here and I calculate here yeah depending on how many decimals I want to display where the decimal point should be yeah and then return segment data but now let's have a look at that function here and you might have guessed that the intelligence of that function is again in a big mapping array. So the function gets yeah the digit 0 to 3 in our case here and the numeral uh, which I need the segment data bit pattern for. The mapping array itself it's yeah this time a boolean array. You could do that with bit banging and using just uh, binary words, but I choose boolean in that case. So the first dimension gives us the numeral 0 to 9. The second dimension gives us the segment to light up for each numeral. For example, 8 is true, 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 true. So all 8 segments of the display have to light up. So the function itself gets the data, initializes the segment data to 32 zeros and then goes through all seven segments A to F. And if in that translation matrix the value for the numeral we want to display 0 to 9 and the specific segment here yeah a to f is true then i add the according bit or bits from my big mapping array for that digit and that segment to the segment data yeah do that for all segments a to f and then return the segment data and that's all the whole code takes up 3 kilobytes of flash and about 400 bytes of RAM. And one update cycle, so calculating the bits and sending them to the controller, takes up about 620 microseconds, which is, uh, yeah, fast enough. But I have uh, two things left I want to show you. First is a power consumption. So the controller and the display need, yeah, aboutish on average, 25, 26 microamps and are peaking out at, yeah, 82, 94, okay, microamps. So below 100 microamps to drive that whole thing here. And that's very nice if you are going for low power application, isn't it? 
And second, I promised to talk about that LCD AC generator, which does not really generate AC. If you look at that other graphic here from the data sheet, you see that the back plane is simply oscillating between zero and supply voltage. In my case, five volts. For an on segment, it also oscillates between zero and five volts, but exactly reversed or 180 degrees phase shift. So that means when the back plane is low, zero volts, the segment output is high, five volts. And the segment output or the segment on the LCD sees plus five volts in relation to the back plane. When the back plane is high on five volts, the segment output is low on zero volts. So the segment in the LCD sees minus five volts. So you actually get on the segment a full 10 volts peak to peak AC. Okay, but at no point, at no point there is any voltage, negative voltage in relation to your supply ground involved. For a segment in the off state, yeah, it's simply the reverse. Uh, it's output is synchronous to the back plane. So if the back plane is zero, the segment output is on zero volts. If the back plane is on five volts, the segment output is on five volts. So the segment in the LCD sees, yeah, nothing, zero volts all the time. And the way they probably do it, it's not really documented, um, is you have your latch output, yeah, which is either high or low, high for on segment, and you have simply a generator, yeah, the one controlled by the external capacitor, which gives you simply low, high, low, high, low, high. And that could go directly to the back plane. And then your output to the segment is the latch output XOR with the generator output. So if your latch is high and your generator output is high, so backplane high, your output will be low, like here. If your generator output is low, latch still high, XOR, your output is high, so like here. And the reverse, of course, if your latch output, that is your segment, is low, then via the XOR, the output and the backplane will always be in sync, like here in the lower curve. And that's it for today. Bye.